Another one bites the dust, y'all. It just keeps getting worse and worse for the travesty and crisis called Harvard University. It started with Claudine Gay, the former president, who resigned 50 counts, 50 counts of plagiarism, over 50% of her academic career fraud. There's more. There's more. Now with Chief Diversity Officer Sherry Ann Charleston, we've got 40. I mean, let me put this in perspective, y'all. Just a, uh, let's just say, I don't want to say run of the mill or average. I would call myself, who is a recovering professor. I still teach online once in a while, but I've been teaching at multiple, multiple higher education, state, private for over 20 years, if you're new to the channel. Um, just for, a, let's just say, an average academic like I used to be, making a few um, misquotes or, you know, failing to ascribe credit to an author, uh, you know, the, something that you took and put in your academic paper, doing that once or twice, I mean, it's still, that's still a formal violation. It's still an academic violation, but it's kind of, you know, it's human. We make mistakes and things get past our scope and and, and, and past our, our, our scrutiny, which is, again, not an excuse. You should be violated for that. But it happens. Like once or twice, it happens. We're talking about not once, not twice, not even five times, not even 20 times. These are multiple double digit violations. And it's like, this is to me, I want you to really, really stick around. I'm going to share with you some detailed evidence of what is happening, how it's getting worse and worse at Harvard University, how this is emblematic of higher education as a whole and the culprit the parasitic disease of an idea called DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, which is really exclusion. I'm going to talk about how that is the catalyst for all of this. I'm actually going to share some stuff about some breaking exclusive you won't get anywhere else. Stick around to this, but let's get right into it. So Sherry Ann Charleston is the chief diversity officer which, you know, God, don't even get me started on a title like that. I can't even imagine. By the way, when I was really ensconced within higher education, when I was doing my full-time adjunct professorship, you know, uh, for the last couple of decades, I mean, I cannot tell you, this has been going on forever. I can't tell you how many emails. If you're a professor out there, please leave a comment because I know you can back me up on this. And this is happening at every institution, but in higher education, you know, for every maybe two or three emails uh, any other industry or corporation gets on DEI, higher education gets about 20 or 30. I can't even tell you. Not only was it a um, bombardment, what is, well, not only was it propaganda, not only was it a, um, a coup of, you know, under the guise of inclusion, basically, you know, advocating for discrimination, but it was disruptive to work. I couldn't even like respond to students' emails and, and you know do my work because I kept getting emails every literally 20 a day about don't forget diversity, don't forget inclusion, don't forget we're having a meeting, don't forget there's a new affair, don't forget we're doing diversity training, don't forget you have to fill out your diversity form. Enough, enough is enough. And it's now all coming to light at how absolutely abominable this idea is because it has basically produced the exact adverse, the antithesis of what it purported to do. So here's the latest on Sherry Ann Charleston, 40 counts again of plagiarism. So Sherry Ann Charleston, chief diversity officer, has been uh, violated and has been um, cha charged basically with 40 counts of plagiarism. And one, this is in the Harvard Crimson, mind you. And one of the uh, egregious charges, as you can see, I have them side by side here, is a paper that she uh, 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 authored that was a basic plagiarism without any accreditation, without any due credit to her husband, LeVar Charleston. She even plagiarized her own husband for crying out loud. But you can look and see the similarities on the left is Sherry Ann Charleston, again, chief diversity officer at Harvard. She's probably making multiple, multiple six figures in that role, which is suspect to say the least, if not downright 
uh, abhorrent and useless. Um, thir- so you can you can see the comparisons here. I'll leave the full article in the actual um, in the actual description of this video. Um, you can see that the 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 highlighted red is Sherry Ann's paper, and the highlighted blue is her husband Lavar's, and you can see the similarities are uncanny. You can see the similarities are downright egregious. There's no accreditation. There's no attribution of authorship, which is an academic fraud violation. That is a policy demerit right there. Um, It even goes further now. This is a great article here where she includes an interview which appears nearly identical to a 2012 interview without any accreditation or any due attribution. Again, when you write a paper, especially an academic paper, let alone any kind of paper, um, but academic paper even more so carries even more gravity. It even carries, it should carry even more uh, attention to detail, scrutiny, and um, accreditation flawlessness, if you will. These are just, uh, these are the worst kind of infractions. These are the worst kind of, of violations that anybody commit can commit, let alone an executive in the highest institution of education in the land. And there's even more. Look at this. There's even more where Sherry uh, Charleston uh, uh, basically plagiarized Rebecca Scott back in 2009. I mean, this is over 50, almost 15 years ago, back in 2009. And then she not only did that, but she also plagiarized in 2009. Louis A. Perez Jr.'s 1983 book without any attribution. They say, I got receipts. I've got the details. I've got all the deets. If this is happening at a major Ivy League university, you have to ask yourself, how is this not a reflection? How is this not? Can you imagine? Let's just say it's happening two to 5% of the time in higher education as a macro, as a whole. Even that. Even that alone would be the demise of this institution, would literally say to the world that we are complete hypocrites, that we do not follow the rules and policies that we claim to emit and we claim to bestow upon the student body uh, and claim to advocate for, and we're getting away with it because we're in positions of power. Even if it was just 1% to 5%, let's just give them a benefit of the doubt. It's probably a billion times higher than that. Can you imagine? What does this do? How can this institution ever recover? By the way, if you're keeping score, really quickly, I just want to say this. So if you're keeping score, since January 2nd, okay, since January 2nd, Claudine Gay resigned uh, after half of her work was to contain plagiarized material. Then a couple weeks later, the Harvard Teaching Hospital, Dana Farber, retracted and corrected 37 papers by its top executives. It just gets worse. Then we have Chief Diversity Officer Sherry Ann Charleston accused of plagiarism and data fraud. And now this is breaking news just recently, just literally within hours of this recording, there was also a discovery that a top Harvard neuroscientist has been accused of falsifying data in 21 different papers. So, what does this all mean? What's, who's the culprit? What's happening here? Why is this happening? What is the cause? Remember, critical discernment, critical thinking. This is the one sovereignty that you and I possess as human beings, as uh, contributing um, uh, citizens of this great nation. Um, One of the freedoms, one of the fabrics, one of the pillars of the creation of this amazing republic is the ability to think for oneself, the freedom to question things, the freedom to uh, uh, say to the higher ups and to the government that we don't think what you're doing is right and I have a right to bring this out publicly and we have a right to enact change. This is what we we are given. This is the why I love this country, my country, more than anything on planet Earth. It's the fact that we have 
this amazing sovereignty to critically think. You saw my video on my medical nightmare. If you haven't, I'll leave it at the end of the end screen. I'll also leave it in the description. You saw my video of my medical nightmare. This is not about, you know, uh, pointing fingers or, or trying to get views or clicks or anything like that. This is not about any of that stuff. This is about one thing and one thing only, and that is trying to speak my truth the best way that I can, feeling an obligation, a responsibility, because nobody else is talking about this. Legacy media is not talking about this. None of the mainstream media is talking about this. We count on mainstream media. We count on journalism. We count on American free press to report the truth. It's just not happening. This is not about, oh, I'm going to get some. It's not about that. This is about exposing hypocrites, exposing fraud, so that we as American citizens can make better decisions. And as somebody who lived in this corrupt swamp for decades, but held my tongue because I was beholden to these institutions, it gives me such a great feeling of purpose and I'm able to bring this to light. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. It has been you know, more than established that Claudine Gay was a DEI hire. It is more than established that DEI is causing all sorts of troubles in other areas, that DEI is discrimination, no matter how way, shape, or form you describe it, or what kind of nomenclature, semantics you try to paint and vividly color over it. It is discrimination because it's not based on merit. It's not based on the best idea wins, the best person wins, the most qualified individual wins. And you know, referring to all the emails I got, referring to this agenda, referring to this deviation from a meritocracy, referring to this um, betrayal of the American ideal, of American principles and values, of the best person gets the job, the best individual idea wins. This is the direct cause. All of these absolute abominations are the direct cause of DEI. Diversity, equity, inclusion does the exact antithesis. It is a parasitic disease of an ideology that needs to go like yesterday. And by the way, by the way, just like uh, what's happening in higher education, I talked about the planes. I talked about aviation, other institutions. Look what Southwest, look at this. I discovered this because I'm the best researcher on planet Earth. Look at what Southwest just said. Look at what Southwest just said. This is an internal uh, PowerPoint that was conducted recently by Southwest Airlines. Now, if you fly Southwest Airlines, I talked about the, the CEO of United, how I'm never flying United Airlines again. If you haven't seen that video, again, check that out on my channel. How DEI is infected, how the people who are flying your plane may not be the most qualified individuals or people flying that plane, which is scary as F. As a father, let alone as just a human being who wants to live, you want me to take my family on a plane where your hiring practices, the people you put behind the cockpit, are not based on merit, but based on diversity, equity, and inclusion? The parasitic disease of an ideology that is? Look at this by Southwest. We are committed to measuring our progress in increasing diversity in senior leadership and reporting our progress openly. We are committed to doubling racial diversity and increasing gender diversity in our senior leadership team by 2025. We are committed, we are committed increasing, a typo, probably written by somebody who, who was hired through DEI. We are committed increasing, that doesn't make any sense, Diverse representation on the Southwest Airlines Board of Directors. Where is qualifications? Where is merit? Where is based on skills, based on experience in any of this language? So if you think what's happening in higher education is bad, which it's the, the direct culprit of all of this is DEI. It just is. There's no other way to look at this. Claudine Gay was a DEI hire. This Sherry Ann Charleston was a DEI hire. This neuroscientist, Shaw something, I can't remember their name, was a DEI hire probably. Um, all the people who run the Faber Hospital at Harvard University has something directly correlated to DEI. 
DEI is an infectious virus that is worse than any virus we've seen in ages. COVID's got nothing on DEI because it's parasitic, it's invisible, it infects under the guise of I'm good for you. COVID doesn't have any, doesn't say anything like that. COVID's not like, hey, I'm good for you, take me. No, this is what makes this more um, villainous, duplicitous, and, and nefarious. It really does. It's the worst idea ever. And that, that's what gives me great purpose to talk about this stuff with you guys and share this with you guys because, again, going back to my medical uh, nightmare video, our main power that we are endowed with is our ability to critically discern and critically think about things. Just because somebody's wearing a white coat or just because somebody has a fancy title or just because something is written to you from your employer doesn't mean that you have to swallow it up and ask for seconds. Do not deny your sovereignty. Do not deny or suppress your ability to critically think and critically discern. That is your ultimate gift as a human being and it is something i'm trying to bring to light time and time again i'm not saying you walk through life on eggshells and you walk through life completely paranoid of everything but i don't trust anything first first until i do my research you know my dad used to tell me my grandfather used to tell me you know don't ever you know, don't believe everything you read in the papers a lot of you do and you're making decisions you know I'm not completely immune to this. We're bombarded by influence every at every corner, especially now with these things in our pocket, right? I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm this perfect individual and I always critically think and I'm always thinking, right? No, no, no. We're all, but it's, it's this video and videos like this are reminders. No, you don't have to be completely paranoid, but a little paranoia is not a bad thing. A little scrutiny is not a bad thing. Thinking twice, critically looking at something, audience purpose message through the rhetorical lens which is a 2000 year old aristotelian uh, methodology is to me the greatest lens to look at all of these messages especially in 2024 right now where we're going to be making the biggest decision that could impact billions of lives it's not just america america what happens in america impacts the entire globe so th this is the stakes can't get any higher I want to pass this off to you guys. What do you guys think of what I'm saying? What do you guys think about what's happening in Harvard education and higher education? Is this um, the tipping point? Is this the inflection point? Is higher education doomed from here on out? Can they ever recover? What do you think of DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion? I respond to all the comments personally. I want to hear from you guys. And don't forget, if you made it this far, in the pinned comment is our free newsletter. It's free absolutely free sign up because we're probably going to get our youtube channel uh, deleted we're probably going to get our facebook deleted i'm on rumble you can follow me on rumble rumble and x are probably the uh, uh, uh the biggest anthems of free speech right now happening in the online ecosystem make sure you follow me there but um in the pinned comment is our free newsletter so make sure you go sign up for that make sure you go check that out i really really want you to sign up it's absolutely free so that way you never ever miss out on anything coming from nez nation live and yours truly professor nez check out these videos right here coming right up the ones that we were just talking about subscribe down there sign up for the newsletter and i really appreciate you god bless you and god bless the united states of america